Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the December 2019 1v1 tournament. I remain your host, Dominic, and we are into the grand finals! Ultra Godzilla versus Steel Blue. The winner wins the tournament. The loser gets second. It is best of three, however, so this is game one. We are going to be on Fairyland, a fairly... Well, I just screwed up OBS. That's a lot. All right, we're going to be on Fairyland, which is a... It is a map. Actually, it's also a very popular map, much like with Titan Duel. It is one of those maps you see a lot. We are still seeing rovers! Because, of course, we're still seeing rovers. It's rovers every day. All day, every day. Ultra Godzilla with the rover. Steel Blue, on the other hand, what are they going for? They are going for cloak bots. We might actually see the buff knights, because... I mean, why not? And we might. This is a smaller map. We could actually see the knights. It's small enough that I could see it being used. But yeah, Fairyland is the sort of map that... Kind of StarCraft. I believe it actually is based on a StarCraft map. So you have your main base, natural expansion, third, corner expansions. I mean, 0k doesn't necessarily have the same expansion structure as StarCraft, so you're probably going to see people just building up this side of the map, only this side of the map, and then harassing the corners out. Like, the corners, it, it's the only real contested one, because it's not always clear whether the Northeast player or the Southwest player is going to get which corner. But... Normally, it's kind of dependent on the mountain ranges, so usually the northeast player gets the southeast corner and the southwest player gets the northeast corner, or northwest corner. But that just comes down to how it's played out. Steel loot, the early scouting on the glaive, and able to get a, a metal extractor? Ooh, maybe, maybe. And no, not even one metal extractor. Unfortunately for them, that glaive does not do much except bounce ineffectually into the sea after dying. Steel Blue, on the other hand, is expanding a bit faster than Ultra Godzilla, so it was nice to scout, but that glaive wasn't really needed to raid. Steel Blue's economy is fine. Ultra Godzilla, on the other hand, is expanding a little bit farther out to begin with. They're just going for that mid-ground expansion very early on, while Steel Blue went for the natural, naturally. And also going for an early imp. Oh! Oh! Are you going to do it? I mentioned before, we haven't seen it yet this tournament, but there's an area cloak function on the Conjurer. And Area Cloak, on top of stuff like Imps or Snitches, is an amazing way of completely disabling your opponent's armor without them having many options to deal with it in advance. They can't, they literally cannot see it coming. And given that new upgrade on the Conjurer allowing the Area Cloak... Oh, well, okay, I guess that's also just useful for defense, period. But given the Conjurer upgrade for Area Cloak, I wonder if we're going to see Conjurers be used to hide Imps coming in. Now, granted, it's irrelevant right now, because that was purely defense, and it worked really well, too. Free Scorcher. Although, to be fair, it's not exactly for cost. Oh, well, I guess it is. Yeah, 120 to 130. I mean, it's... Amps are a great defense against light vehicles if you're going for heavy cloaky. Sorry, if you're going for heavy glaives on cloaky. But it's also just kind of funny, because like I said, you could have the imps cloaked as they go in. Although we are seeing a bit of an issue with the defensor. The defensor, it does go down, but manages to take out a couple of glaives in the process, slowing the expansion, or slowing the harassment down for Steel Blue, allowing Ultra Godzilla to maintain this expansion. And whether they're going for the Northwest, I don't know. I feel like they, they could, but it looks like no. They're really trying to take this ridge in the center. Ultra Godzilla wants to make sure that ridge belongs to them, and then presumably go to the Northwest. Hard to say. Steel Blue, on the other hand, expanding a lot more nakedly, and that is exactly what Ultra Godzilla is taking advantage of, Scorcher able to get rid of a metal extractor for free, possibly able to get rid of a second metal extractor, but it's a little hard to... No, it's not going to manage to do that. Steel Blue's commander coming back in time to help defend, but a second Scorcher to take on the metal extractor. That puts Steel Blue technically even with Ultra Godzilla, or maybe slightly behind, but there's going to be some reclaim. So I guess that's something. Unfortunately, Steel Blue is not actually building anything. I'm not sure if they're quite sure what to build right now. Another imp coming in here gets rid of a Scorcher. That's... Pretty efficient, getting rid of a couple Scorchers without getting rid of a Glaive. Ultra Godzilla's commander is going to be a bit of a threat. Six Glaives, eh, that'd be very close. Eight Glaives would be better, while Steel Blue's commander, on the other hand, is getting torn to pieces. But I think Ultra Godzilla is thinking better of... Sorry, Steel Blue's thinking better of attacking Ultra Godzilla's commander immediately, but Ultra Godzilla is taking a nearby expansion for Steel Blue. That would have been where Steel Blue would have expanded next, and they can't really do that. This Conjurer's just kind of stuck. Same time, Glaive's coming in here. Able to get rid of yet another fencer. Actually, quite a few fencers, but not enough. The Scorchers are able to defend perfectly well. 
annihilating the entire Glaive army and without that imp to help defend, it's just not going to help. It's not going to work. Like I said, I don't know if Steel Blue remembers the fact that Conjurers have Area Cloak, because if they did, I could see that being used as part of an aggressive imp strategy. But, I don't know. On the same time, Steel Blue does not really have the energy for it. Now, to be fair, this map is great for wind. A few more wind generators, and that would actually give a lot for the Area Cloak. And there it is! There's the Area Cloak! They did remember! Or they're watching the stream right now. I don't think they're watching the stream, though. Uh, okay, when I say heavy glaives, I mean heavy on the glaives, not, like, a special type of glaive that is heavier than the normal glaive. Irrelevant, though. Like, the glaives are doing the job they need to do. Coming in here, that area cloak imp did exactly what he needed to do. Ultra Godzilla's commander. Is it going to go down? It is. It is going to go. Oh, so close. Back to zero seconds, but it is down. Ultra Godzilla losing their commander right in Steel Blue's base, too. So Steel Blue could have a nice bit of reclaim. At the same time, though, Ultra Godzilla has taken over the rest of the map. So if Steel Blue can't defend against the incoming forces, the Scorcher Ravager, or Scorcher, the Scorcher Reaper combo, there, or not Reaper, Scorcher Fencer combo, there is nothing that can be done. However, hey, Steel Blue's at least managed to get rid of a lot of Ultra Godzilla's side expansions. And there's the Imp. That's the ticket. Scorches do go down. The Glaive is able to defend. That opens Steel Blue up to taking this game, and they completely wiped out Ultra Godzilla's commander in their base. That is how much reclaim? 1,400 metal? Oh, okay, 600 metal reclaim. 440 metal off of the commander itself. Unupgraded, so it's not a huge amount of metal reclaim, but still a lot of metal reclaim to work with. So Steel Blue doing amazingly well. At the same time, Glaive's going over to the north, managing to deal a fair bit of damage, losing that to the Rippers. But Ultra Godzilla forced to go for those Rippers, which... I mean, if we see Ronan come in, that could do the trick. Or, heck, not even Ronan. The Knights coming in. Hey, there's the Knights! They should be able to take out the Rippers, no problem. The Scorchers are still coming in, and the Knights might not be up in time. Nah, it doesn't matter. The Glaives are able to do their job. More Scorchers going down, and is the Reclaim coming? Ooh, it's, it's close. Ultra Godzilla is just not letting up the pressure, though. Steel Blue cannot take this Reclaim for simply because it's not safe to do so. And there aren't really enough Conjurers up to just sacrifice Conjurers or risk Conjurers that way. But with the Knight on the board, it's quite possible to get rid of these Rippers without too much issue. Again, though, Ultra Godzilla is still heavily dominant on this map. They have no additional factories on the queue, but they have you know, an extra 10 metal per second. They have all the production being used up. Steel Blue's relying entirely on Reclaim to have the economy anywhere near on par with their opponent. And while the Knights are doing a great job helping come back in the game, Scorcher's harassment is just absolutely relentless, and nothing is stopping that. There is... This is it. Steel Blue, unfortunately, is going to not be able to recover from this too quickly. The Knights being on field is at least going to help defend and possibly help out when it comes to taking this Commander Corpse. But now I have to rebuild all of these wind generators on top of having to take the Commander Corpse without losing anything in the process. And clearly Steel Blue is waiting for those wind generators to be back up before reclaiming. But that has got to hurt. And of course, more forces coming in. Ultra Godzilla can just keep throwing forces at Steel Blue. Even if they're lost, Steel Blue has to win every fight, losing almost nothing in the process. And still build up the knights, and still build up the power generators to allow them to get the metal off of the recon commander in order to be able to get the army to actually maintain a consistent size. Because bear in mind, knights do not have splash damage. And that's going to cause a problem here, allowing the Scorchers to come in and rip them to shreds. Go for the factory, take out the factory, that should be able to take out the rest of the base, and I do not see any way Steel Blue has it getting back in this. The knights are doing a great job of whatever they can, but the rippers are just tearing apart the extractors. The Scorchers were doing a number on everything else. The factory just barely survives. The Ripper's going to try to make sure work of that. It is still... Yeah, no, it's still fine. It's still alive. And still, this commander is still on the field and still managing to do some work, but it's only able to do so much. However, that might actually have been a major turning point. Unfortunately for Steel Blue, they don't have a lot of, of conjurers on the field, so they can't easily reclaim all this metal. But, when they can, that's another 700 metal to their name. However, Steel Blue needs to reclaim that in order to be anywhere near on par. That's the thing with Ultra Godzilla right now. They have a massive metal advantage. They're switching over to Locusts, and if Steel Blue sees this coming and decides to deal with it, then it'll be a much easier task to take this game back. 
But at this point, Steel Blue, I don't think they have any way of knowing. I don't think they have any idea, honestly. They're just trying to desperately get defenses set up to hold their commander alive, try to hold on to some amount of territory, taking out Ultra Godzilla's ground forces as best they can. But it's only going to go so far unless Steel Blue can start reclaiming and get that power infrastructure back up, which they are not queuing. Oh, finally, there it is. There's the wind generators. But yeah, that's the thing. Steel Blue needs to get a lot of power to go in order to actually be able to get the reclaim, in order to be able to get a chance of getting back in this game. And it's a chance. And mostly because Ultra Godzilla keeps suicide in their forces. And honestly, it's like it's not really going to matter all that much because, again, Locust Swarm. And here it comes, too. The Locust Swarm is on the way. Looks pretty set to deal some real pain. Or, nope. Never mind. I, what are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, Steel Blue might be giving the game... Or, sorry, might be getting the game in their hand. Ultra Godzilla might be giving the game away when it comes to the Locusts. They've got to be careful, because if those Locusts get spotted too soon, it's going to be a problem. And nicely done with the Eric Cloak. I like that. Steel Blue, very intelligently using that to get to the Dominatrix before it can do any real damage. That was, that was very clever. I like that. Same time, though, there isn't really anything prepared for the Locusts. No Warriors up, no... No Gremlins, for sure. Knights are way out of position, although they, I mean, they'd be helpful. Absolutely. But that is not going to do anything. And there it is. The Locust coming in. That should be game. The spectators calling game. Steel Blue not quite willing to throw in the towel yet, but I don't know how this is going to actually work other than, well, other than a towel throw. There's the factory going down. The rest of the main base goes down with it. The commander is still up and the Knights are still doing job. They're still doing some kind of work. But it's too little too late. Just Ultra Godzilla has the map. They've taken out Steel Blue's main base. They're taking out the expansions. The Knights are doing a fine job holding on as best they can. And Steel Blue, I mean, they'd have to wipe out Ultra Godzilla's entire production infrastructure with two Knights and two Glaives. And, sorry, three Knights, two Glaives, and a Commander. That's all they have and all they will have. Steel Blue has lost... All of the production, they have a single conjurer that's on the board, but it's not going to be able to rebuild anything in time. The Locust will find it and kill it too too quickly. And unfortunately, the Dominatrix is coming in as well. So that's one less, actually, in a sense, two less, two fewer knights. And Steel Blue realizes what's going on, throws in the towel, and that's going to be game. And unfortunately, the commander gets killed. See, in this situation, I want to see the commander get captured. But no, everything is killed. Ultra Godzilla doesn't even have to wait until the surrender happens. They just cap and kill. I mean, granted. I kind of like, like, Steel Blue potentially had room to do some damage. I don't think they would have won. But the Dominator sees without them? I don't know. But they are there, and they existed. And Steel Blue knew about them. But hey, it wasn't it wasn't too long of a drag out. But yeah, I like that. That was a neat use of Knights. But that was just game one. We are going to be moving on to game two in... When they get ready. I'm not going to go into a break. Just going to be going off to game two lobby. It shouldn't take too long for them to set it up. In fact, if I'm not quick, oops, they might already start, but without me. And we're going to be going on to Frostburn. Another map which is quite new. I mean, Banana Republic was the other new map. There's another option people could go for, but no, Frostburn. Which I... I haven't casted this map, I don't think. I mean, I'll grant, I haven't been doing a lot of my regular casts recently. It's... don't really want to get into it. Long story. But, yeah, I've seen Frostburn be played a few times. I haven't had a chance to really cast it. I've looked at it a little bit myself just to get an idea of what it is. It is snow! It's lots of snow. Snow everywhere. It's snowy, and it's hilly. And it's... It looks pretty. I want to make a snowman on this map. But I can't, because it's not a real place. And also, the ground texture is more of a rock, really, when you actually stare at it. It's not really snow. Anyhow, with that out of... I guess it's supposed to be snow. The detail texture doesn't quite capture that. Ultra Godzilla going for spiders, because, you know, start. you start in a situation where there's cliffs in front of your start location, and choke points on the ramps on the sides... So yeah, spiders make sense. As is, as is Steel Blue. Both players going for spiders because, yeah, you kind of have to in this map. 
That front door cliff really makes spiders quite a tantalizing option. I, just, I could see maybe... Maybe cloak bots? Maybe jump bots? Actually, oh, this reminds me of Desert Cliffs, I believe it's called. A very tiny map that's also got a similar kind of section in the center, although it's much smaller there. It's much higher, much smaller. And that tends to be Shield Cloak because you start on the ground. Start on the low ground. Oh, I did cast it once? Okay. Oh, that's right! This has super maxes on the sides. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Brang. You're... And thanks, Francis, for pointing out the position. Yeah, snowman... All right, Sprang, you're right. We could have snowman features. I... I don't know. I mean, it's the right time of year. I just don't have much experience with importing malls in the spring. But... Yeah. Oh, also, people asking if the closer hound of the Mandy Spider only... Uh, let's see. So the commander has the same... Has bot movement. Let's see. Yes. Yes, they are. Purple means impassable. So... This is off the commander's movement, which is standard bot movement. Yeah, you need spiders to go down those cliffs. I don't know if it's enough to mandate spider only, just because there are still choke points and ramps and everything. You could still get around without spiders. I mean, the ramps, I think, are are actually fairly shallow. I think you could probably get away with the vehicles. I think it looks like it's designed for vehicles, too, like the way it's been smoothed out and such. My guess is that it has been designed around vehicle pathing. But the thing is... While the cliffs don't mandate spider only, it gives you a much shorter rush distance and a much easier time attacking and defending basically everywhere in the map. Speaking of, Steel Blue grabs that super mechs. <clears throat> they grab the super mechs and that will be possible. I don't know if it'll, it will give them the game. I mean, to be fair, Ultra Godzilla is up 1-0. So Steel Blue will have to win twice in order to take this. Ultra Godzilla just has to win once. Although Ultra Godzilla, they are, well, they're showing what Redbacks can do. Really not having too many problems here. I would like to see them repair this, because... Okay, that's exactly, that is exactly what they're doing. Weaver coming around the side to help with that repair. But one or two more fleas would have done it. So what, 25? Yeah, actually, that's surprising. That was 10 fleas. Nearly killed the redback for cost. At any rate, Steel Blue grabbing yet another Supermax, but this one is not going to last... Ultra Godzilla spots that, grabs it. The Weaver will be coming in here to take that on top of the... Well, take the Metal Extractor after the Redback kills it. And at the same time, we have Ultra Godzilla already grabbing a Supermax of their own on the western side of the map. Both Supermaxes on the western side of the map. So it's going to be three Supermaxes to one. Now, granted, the Supermaxes are just two Mexes. That's all they're worth. But this is a pretty famine map. So I don't really see the Supermax being something that is a small thing. I don't see it being... This trivial little bit of... I don't see it being a piece of trivia. Who has more super mexes. Especially when it's 2 to 1. Going on 3 to 1. Assuming that Weaver actually does his job. There it is. And actually going on 3 to 0. Oof. Yeah, Ultra Godzilla already 30 metal to 17. They don't quite have the energy infrastructure to deal with it. But that should be coming fairly shortly. I mean, I say that despite the fact that... Energy shortage has been a running theme in the tournament. I can't think of any game where a player wasn't e-stalled. At, at almost the entire match. This actually might be the first one, too, because we're seeing Ultra Godzilla does have a bunch of power. Or rather... Okay, they're getting lucky. The wind is picking up. That's what's going on. But they do have a lot to work with. That's twice the economy of Steel Blue. Again, just like... Not last game, but the last series. In the upper bracket semifinal Or the winner's finals. Ooh, Venom, however, just... Or Widow, rather, coming in here. And that Recon Commander for Ultra Godzilla has nothing to stop. It's still blue coming with a Lightning Gun. Getting attacked on the back, though, by Fleas. But Fleas coming in from Steel Blue to try to help deal with that. Oh, this is close. But it looks like Ultra Godzilla's Commander should be able to get out of there in time. No, never mind. That's 10 seconds, not one second. Misread it thanks to the snow. However, the Fleas are still up here. Steel Blue's Commander forced to retreat. Does not have enough of the lightning gun to take out Fleas. And that will kill the Commander. Steel Blue throws in the towel after losing their Commander to Fleas, of all things. Would not expect Fleas to kill Commanders, but you get enough of them and they do the job. And that is it. Ultra Godzilla wins 2-0. And the Grand Finals winning the tournament. Winning Steel Blue in second place. And that is it. Congratulations, Ultra Godzilla. Winning off Fleas, killing a Commander. That is a way to win. So Ultra Godzilla takes the match 
takes the game, takes the tournament, or takes the game, then the match, then the tournament goes on over. And that is that. Steel Blue is second place. Dyth gets third place. And Matthew Whitman gets fourth place. Who I hadn't seen play before, but congratulations all of you. And thank you to everyone for playing in this tournament. It was very entertaining to watch. And actually a fairly reasonably length tournament. We were all on time, or started on time. Aachen was very keen on that and ran very efficiently. So nicely done. I appreciate that. Anyway, that's that. So thanks again for watching. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for playing. Thank you, Aquanim, for hosting and getting this whole thing organized. And that is going to be it. So have a good night, everyone.